Hello boys and girls and welcome back to another episode of Shanka Show, stories about life in the Soviet Union. In today's video we're going to talk about Soviet-era apteka, the drug stores. This guy may have actually grown up in the USSR, but he's still a charlatan. The view he takes in his earlier videos is very much, some parts were good, some parts bad, overall life was fine, but there has been a steady slide into sensationalistic anti. So let's start with a short lesson of Russian language, Rok Ruskova Yazyka. Aptieka, Aptieka, that's how we called drug stores in Russian language. And it looks like this word arrived from Greek language. Apotek means like a warehouse or storage area. Aptieka. Okay, but before I tell you about Soviet era drug stores, I need to say something about American drug stores, chains like Walgreens or Rite Aid. It's surprising to me that these overpriced convenience stores stay in business because it's literally nothing to do with drug stores. Drugs are being used as the bait and they place them on the opposite side from the entry. So people have to walk all the way through the store to get to their prescriptions. And the most ridiculous thing, of course, is Rite Aid. The store is called Rite Aid, but when you walk into that building, we have one here in town in Beer and Springs, the first thing I see is cigarettes and alcohol. That's the first items your eyes catch when you walk into a drugstore. Then, of course, you need to walk all the way to the opposite side that's what the prescriptions are. Personally, I don't understand how this place is stay in business because everything is so overpriced there. I can compare prices like Walmart versus Rite Aid and just mind blowing. It's literally like double or triple the price, but it's capitalism. They figure out that they can sell plenty of expensive goods for people who come in to buy some kind of prescription drugs and they're doing great and one more thing although we're going to talk about drug stores we're not going to talk about drugs as narcotics we're going to talk about medicines and if you're interested in the topic of drugs in the soviet union i already have a video on that topic and the link will be in the comment section okay so this is your typical apteka in the older part of the soviet town this photo was taken probably sometimes in the 70s maybe 60s <laughs> it's hard to tell it's always black and white so you have your message up, Tjeka, about those four windows. So you see the store is pretty small. And above the sign up, Tjeka, there's a long banner, which is probably red color and white letters. And I'm talking something about raising the level of culture and service of medical professionals. So it's definitely, I believe it's 70s. And while we look at this photo, did you see the trees have bottoms are painted white? So I'd like to answer this question, which sometimes pop in my channel. Why do they paint the bottom of the trees white in Soviet Muhasransk Hicksville? <laughs> that was a question posted in my story about small Soviet towns. So the official answer, uh, why do they need to whitewash tree trunks? It was always done in the spring. It was part of the spring cleaning. Subotnik is Saturday free work. People will clean the areas and they'll paint, whitewash the uh, bark of the trees. So the explanation is this. White color, as it's known, is characterized by the maximum reflectivity and the layer of whitewash perfectly protects the dark bark of the trees from heating. I don't know. In Soviet Union, I don't think we have our issues with too much heat <laughs> in the weather. In addition, whitewashing destroys many pests uh, that hibernate in the bark cracks, like alphids, leaf rollers, and the different insects and mites. And there's the view of the modern style apteka. So this one was probably built sometimes in the 70s, early 80s. It's when they stop making retail stores occupying the lower part of the apartment buildings. It made them a separate single story building. So next to apteka to the right, you see the sign says Pochta. So that's a postal office. And this is how a village apteka look like and just your average log cabin, but repurposed for the drugstore. And what I recall about Soviet drugstores, and I went there from time to time, they were never crowded. I don't recall ever a line of people in a Soviet apteka. There were maybe one or two people, you know, looking at the displays or purchasing drugs, but otherwise no lines, no crowd. So every apteca had so-called ideal receptor. So that's a, your prescription department. And as the person right here, this photo, this photo taken in 1985, believe it or not. So this the lady brings the paper from her doctor for a specific medicine. 
that's going to be, be pre-made or maybe they had it in stock, so, but it's not over-the-counter medicine. Recept. Recept. So that's the Russian word for prescription. Recept. In Russian, we also use the same word recept for recipes. So you have a recept as a medical prescription and recept as the cooking recipe. Same word. And speaking of prescription department in Soviet Apteka, we had this interesting expression. If something is done precisely, just right, you would say точно как в аптеке. Exactly like in Apteka. So let's talk about different medical supplies that you could purchase in over-the-counter area of Apteka. The first Soviet medicine that comes to my mind is Validol. Uh, those came in pills. It's like a heart medicine. And that small container containing 10 pills was 14 copics. Validol. Another Soviet era medicine that came to my mind is Carvalol. And uh, that one is uh, like a tranquilizer based on the herb valerian. And it contained also phenobarbital. So that was a popular medicine to like to relax and calm down. Carvalol. The most popular painkiller and fever reducer was of course aspirin. Uh, there was plenty of those and it was pretty cheap. Although it was called not aspirin but acetylsalicylovaya kislata. I also remember Noshpa. That's the, a medicine that came from Hungary. And I remember it because my grandfather used it a lot. It's like no spasm <laughs> uh, name and as for your stomach for cramps and it was a shortage of that uh, medicine out in the villages so i remember noshpa because we always brought a bunch of that when we came from kiev to stay with our grandparents in the village for upset stomach or if you have a bad gas we always used activirovne ugel activated charcoal that came in pills as shown this picture and it's very cheap, still very cheap in Ukraine. So every time I visit my parents, I make sure I bring some home. Apteka was the only place that you could purchase vitamins. So for example, ascorbinova kislata, ascorbic acid, or polyvitamins, we call them multivitamini. So those were interesting. They were in the shape of the small, tiny yellow balls. And my family always had those. And I usually take three every day. And while those vitamins tasted good, ribijir, fish oil, but we call it fish fat i had to consume it by spoon and that was disgusting <laughs> and of course i must mention gematogen that was a nutrition bar pretty much we treated almost like our candy bar and its main ingredient was a cow blood so they also added uh, sugar some other uh, items to make it taste better but it literally a product was a dry cow blood uh, <laughs> Anyway, one of the worst memories of my Soviet childhood is getting sick, like getting really bad cold. Because the way we were treating cold, like really bad cough, is applying so-called garchichnik. So it's like a mustard sheet. So it's a pieces of paper that has a mustard paste on them. And you put them in the warm water for several seconds. Then you apply it to your chest or to your back. And then you lay on it for about 30 minutes and then burns like crazy and i remember pretty much every winter i'll get sick with bad cough and a garchichnik will be the treatment and that was just horrible literally you laying and crying it's so painful another anti-cough treatment you could purchase in apteca was so-called bunky so you can translate it as jars i honestly have no idea how it worked but it did work it really helped with your cough and bunky were way less painful although the marks they leave on your skin uh, look just horrible so pretty much you use a wad of cotton that you dip in um, alcohol you set it on fire then you insert that little flame inside of the jar and you create that way kind of like a vacuum and then we apply it to the skin, it sucks your skin in and you lay like that for 30 minutes and it somehow brings blood flow, increases the blood flow around your lungs or your um, whatever the bronchitis part is and it helps with cough. Really strange treatment. And for treating cuts and wounds, you can purchase iodine solution it's called Yod. So that's an alcohol and iodine mix. I think it was like 5%. And that's painful thing as well. 
to apply it to your open cut. Another popular treatment of cuts was so-called zilonka, brilliant green. It had only 1% of alcohol, so it didn't burn as much, so usually kids were getting treated with zilonka instead of iodine. Soviet apteka was also the only place you could purchase preservative or izdelia number two, item number two, so that's the condom. If you're interested in the topic of birth control in the Soviet Union, I already made a video on that, so I will provide the link below in the comment section. Soviet condoms were of poorer quality, they were not lubricated, they actually had two condoms per packet, and they used talc so those two condoms wouldn't get stuck together, so you can imagine how delightful it was to apply the device. Fun fact, Russian word for condom is preservative, preservative. So it sounds quite funny for any Russian when they say this food is full of preservatives. We also had, and I don't know if we call it street word or rude word, for we also called condoms gandon. And the same word was used to describe somebody who is not a nice person, like an asshole, like on настоящий гандон. Fun fact, not everyone hated Soviet condoms. Since they were not lubricated, people who worked in explosive business, like stone quarries and such, they loved to buy dry Soviet condoms by hundreds because they were great to protect explosive sticks from moisture. Many aptekas, drug stores in small towns and villages also worked as so-called Zagatavitelnaya Kantora. So they purchased from people different dry herbs and berries that could be processed into medicines. And here's the aptekas poster that says Sabirajte lekarstvene rastenia, collect medicinal plants, and it gives you Timeline, when is the best time to collect specific uh, plants? Zviraboy, Krapiva. Uh, Krapiva is the stinging needles. Padarozhnik, uh, don't remember. The, anyway, all those could be translated. So they tell you when is the best time to collect those plants. And then there's the prices. And it's all, of course, for dry items. So they even uh, were purchasing dry raspberries for 55 rubles a kilo. And... The most expensive item, it looks like, was Lipistki Vasilka, 88 rubles per kilo. So that's the petals of the this little blue flower. I don't know how to translate in English, Vasilok. But you need to collect a lot of flowers and dry those petals to get one kilo. But that was 88 rubles. That's a lot of money. And now let's talk about quality of Soviet drugs and how well aptekas were supplied with different medicines. When I was researching for this video, I discovered to my surprise that many Soviet-made drugs that people use extensively, like mentioned earlier, Validol or Carvalol, they really didn't do anything good to people. Yes, they were cheap, but effects were minimal. And that uh, Hungarian-made Noshpa is actually banned everywhere except Eastern Europe and Russia. And of course, you know, years passed by, but when I compare how my kids, when they're getting sick, and when I was getting sick, they get healthy so much quicker because drugs are so much stronger. Uh, one time, when I was about 12, I got pneumonia, like two-sided pneumonia, so it was really bad. And I was getting injections in my butt cheek. So they were um, giving me shots of antibiotics every day. And they lasted like for several weeks. And I was slowly recovering. And I remember nurse will come to our apartment because we had that service for kids. And she will ask which butt cheek this time. And I was literally crying because like I didn't know both butt cheeks were hurting so bad from injections. We as a kids had to spend sometimes several days laying in bed with high temperature and you know, a fever, coughing, and mom will be giving you hot tea and giving you garchichniki, those master sheets or banki, and that was pretty much the only way you would recover. So it lasted long and was a really painful, painful experience. So the good quality drugs available in Soviet Union were mostly imported drugs, and that's when we had shortage. Remember the word deficit? So we had quite a few so-called uh, deficit nelikarstva, deficit drugs, and that what made job at apteka quite valuable for people because you had access to deficit items. And I already mentioned in my video about birth control that Indian-made condoms were in such a high demand, people were willing to overpay, and then people paid like three rubles per condom versus two kopecks for two Soviet condoms, 
because they were such a good quality and some people even washed them to reuse them. So yes, if you worked at Apteka, you were an important person in your town and people wanted to have good relations with you and that's when the exchange of services and goods was going on. So you will get people some deficit drugs in exchange they will help you to get some deficit furniture or deficit books. A mother of one of my childhood friends, Dima, she used to work as a pharmacist and then as a zavedusha, so as a manager of an apteka in a small town in northern Ukraine. And when I visited their apartment, I was impressed because she had really nice furniture, really nice rugs on the floor and on the wall. And their selection of books was just amazing because she had a lot of those deficit books by Jack London and Hatha Christie, which was not available to purchase in a regular bookstore. So she was a local drug dealer in a good sense of way. And in exchange for access for drugs, people would give her access to furniture and nice color TV. So you could tell that she was doing good. And once again, we arrive to the question, what is better, cheap, ineffective drugs or expensive and good quality drugs? Because in modern day Russia, they even have a brand of Sovietska Apteka. So it's called Soviet Apteka. So that's a chain of the drug stores in Russia. And I'm not sure if it's a private, it says federal apteka chain. So I'm not sure it's a franchise or what, but this is like a nostalgia for the old good old Soviet days. And they use this um, nostalgia to promote the Soviet apteka brand. And for those of you who are curious daredevils, Gimatagian is available on Amazon. So if you're curious to try dry, cow blood in a candy bar it's available i'll provide link in the comment section and before we finish i'd like to read you this uh, funny story that occurred in one of the aptekas so the guy says i went to apteka bought some pills and the lady uh, asked me do you have 60 copics so I said i got in my pocket a dump change on the table and it was exactly 60 copics and she said wow Apteke, or just like in apteka and they all had a good laugh and another apteka anecdote so these two girlfriends are chatting and one is asking so uh, how did you meet your husband she's like well i used to work in apteka and this guy came to buy some condoms and he asked for xxxl size wow really so what happened well after the wedding i discovered that he was stuttering <laughs> Okay, my friends, it's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this story, maybe learned something new. As always, please don't forget to like this video, post your comment, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания, goodbye.